investing in rental properties for beginners part two so first video i talked about how to house hack add an adu today i'm going to talk about leaving the bay area leaving silicon valley to buy your first rental property we're not leaving california we're just leaving this immediate area so stick around and i'll get started Hi, I'm Annie Baker. I'm a realtor here in Silicon Valley. I specialize in selling houses, but today I am talking about buying your first rental property. For a lot of people, unfortunately, the Silicon Valley Bay Area is too expensive. I mean, even a one bedroom, you're looking at almost 400,000 and up. A lot of people say, you know, I've been pre-approved to buy a house up to $250,000 and I just can't do that here. Where would you suggest going? Well, honestly, it's not up to me, number one. Number two is define what kind of rental property do you want? Do you want something that is kind of maybe like a vacation house for you too, that maybe you rent parts of the year and sometimes you can go and enjoy it? Do you want it to be strictly, you know, I'm just renting it, Annie. I just, I want to get long-term tenants and where's a good place to do that? So first to find that, they're two totally different kinds of rental properties. Then the next thing I would do is start looking at certain areas that have that price range available for you and looking at what the long-term five-year projected uh, value of that area will be. There's a lot of different places. I mean, you can go to Trulia and Zillow. They talk about that. Realtor.com will even talk about that. Then there's a lot of real estate investing uh, sites. So just start Googling that. But that's something to consider is where are people thinking the home values are going to go? What are the jobs like? Are there schools nearby? Are there activities nearby? Is it is a desirable place for people to either vacation or to live? So don't just think, well, gosh, I can, you know, buy a house in the Central Valley for that price and that's what I'll do. Oh my gosh, you'll get yourself into some trouble there. And I know that, you know, things are changing right now. We're kind of in a weird time in summer of 2020. We're still in shelter in place and a lot of companies are allowing people to work from home so they can move out of the city, move out of the area. And a lot of companies are saying that's going to continue indefinitely. So some of those people are going to go buy in other areas, which could be great because there's going to be more demand in certain areas, but some people that already live in those areas still won't be able to buy a house. So they're still going to need rentals. So consider all those things. Why would one area maybe appreciate more and faster over time? One of the things I also always tell people to look for are school districts. Look for the better school districts. Even if housing prices are lower in certain areas, typically people will always pay more for a better school district. It's just the way it goes. And so stick with better school districts. And if you can't afford the top elementary school district, at least go for one of the top high school districts. It keeps you in an area that will always appreciate more than an area that this And a second tip I would say is contact the local real estate investment group. You can find that online. Google what's the, you know, the name of the city and the real estate investing group and reach out to some of those members. What would they say? Talk to some property managers in the area too. Say you're considering buying a property. Where do they like to find tenants for and where do they shy away from? It's a great resource, property managers. And of course, you always need to have a local realtor. I know a ton of realtors all over California. So you can always start with me and I can give you a referral, someone I trust, that will give you good advice. Again, you don't wanna just chase the price of the home. Hey, I can afford this much, so I'm just gonna find a house. It's in pretty good shape and I'll just buy that. There's a lot more that goes into it that will make it a better investment long-term. When you're starting to think about where are you gonna buy out of the area, and if you're thinking of it possibly as a vacation rental or an Airbnb versus a long-term rental, you also have to keep in mind or you will have to furnish it. And I'm not talking about going to garage sales and just getting a lot of junk and throwing it together. You will get more money if you spend a little bit of time making sure it all goes together and looks good. I'm not saying you can't buy something at a garage sale that will be a great find, but don't just throw in some ugly furniture and think, voila, it's furnished, it'll get rented. Okay, spend a little time, make sure it looks good, clean, updated, 
so that you'll get the most amount of rent income for your vacation rental. So those are just some things to keep in mind when you're looking out of the area. Uh, I invest out of California, so I have some personal tips that I could share depending on what your situation is. So again, click on the link below to set up a time to talk to me. I love talking about real estate investing, so I would love to put you in the right direction, get you connected with some of my personal contacts that will be great resources for you. So I hope to hear from you. So in part three of my series, I am gonna talk about investing out, out of California. So not necessarily somewhere you can drive to in a day to check on a situation with a tenant. It's a different animal out of state, but that's what I'll talk about. So I hope to see you on that video. And until next time, have a great one.